Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Titus here with Mid Valley Mercenaries. And in this video, I'm gonna give you my personal opinion and review of the QU HD Flex Waders. <laughs> So I thought long and hard about making these videos and I was gonna try to give all these fancy details and go into depth and use the proper verbiage and all this and that and I thought you know what you can go on Kuyu's website at Kuyu.com and look at that stuff. Um, there's not a ton on YouTube so that's why I'm doing this because I want to put these videos out as a duck hunter, a person reviewing these that has used them in the field for a whole duck season and let you guys know my thoughts on it and what I think about the Kuyu HD Flex Waders. Before we get started I want to let you guys know that if there's any other pieces of clothing in the Kuyu waterfowl line that you guys want to check out I have made a playlist go on our channel click on playlist and you can click on Kuyu waterfowl gear if you guys like waterfowl hunting videos subscribe to our channel we put them out every season and we've been doing it for a long time now so subscribe to the channel all right let's get started So I think one of the very first things that we should address on these is where's the zipper? Zipper waders have got popular so much since Sitka first came out with their zip waders. It's insane. And I'll raise my hand and say I was like one of the first guys to buy those waders when they came out. That being said, Sitka did not come out with zip waders on the very beginning. They came out with waders such as this. So just keep that in mind when you're thinking of future reference for waders. But I thought it was gonna be a big deal because I have had zip waders for quite some time now and I thought I was gonna be a little bit frustrated, but I wasn't. The biggest thing that everybody says is, oh, put gear on and off, go in the bathroom, all this stuff with the zip, and that's legit and that's a real reason to like want the zipper or to even cool off when you're walking. But I can tell you this right now, if it's hot outside, I literally can unbuckle this and because I have the waiter belt, I literally have done this so many times, I just roll this down. It's to my waist. That is kind of out of the question to be an excuse why you need the zip waders. Another reason was getting gear on and off right. These are all things I thought myself too, trust me. And I'm not saying I wouldn't go to zip again or have zip or I like zip. I do like zip. I'm going to be honest with you. This wasn't like as annoying not having zip as I thought it would be. I really feel like the only advantage of having zip waders is, is going to the bathroom. That being said, if zip waders, whatever brand it may be, if it doesn't go down all the way to the crotch or to the bottom of the crotch, it doesn't do you no good anyways. You still have to roll them down. Now I've seen some waders, I've tried them on, it's the, the bottom of the zipper's up at your belly button. So how are you gonna use the restroom? You know what I'm saying? So layering and putting on layers, I thought because you know you can unzip and kind of open it wide open, that that was gonna be a problem as well. But honestly, it's not. Because on these waders, there is a cinch on both sides that you can loosen and tighten to get that kind of seal up. So like I have mine set where I kind of like it, but you can crank these down and suck these right up to you so there's none of that extra baggage. I mean, we've all went so long without zip waders and I know that's in and I, I do love them like I said but it's not as big of a deal as I thought it would be and to have this good of quality of waders paying $7.99 versus you know some waders now I've heard some are up to 1200 bucks now some brands it's crazy but I'll tell you what the advantage of a lot of this stuff coming out now and I know for a fact on the Kuyu waders is it's a lifetime warranty. I've said this so many times, whether it was on our podcast, whether it was on these videos, is stop buying $250 waders that you gotta replace every two years. You may get lucky and get those waders that last four years. I had a pair of lacrosses. They were neoprene waders that actually lasted for four years. The second exact same pair that I bought the next year, it didn't even last me one month into season and they were already leaking. Nowadays, brands like Kuyu have a lifetime warranty and I can tell you another thing that's highly discussed on these is oh it's Sims yes Kuyu and Sims paired together and partnered together to make these waders specifically for waterfowl hunting and for Kuyu and I can tell you something Sims has been around for longer than a lot of these brands by a long shot they've been around for years and to know that Sims is making these waders and partnering up with Kuyu just know that if there's ever any issues or any problems they will take care of you. Their warranty is quick. They move fast. They get them back to you. If there's any problems, I'm telling you, they take care of you. So like I said, this is my favorite pattern, Velo. I've loved this more than any camo pattern I've ever used. I was surprised whether it was dark green tulies or brown tulies or 
tan tulis. This color blended in so good. I've got so many pictures. If you want to check it out on Instagram, we did a bunch of photos in this. I told Thomas I'm surprised how good and how versatile this camo pattern of Velo is. Okay, we'll kind of work from the top down now. Shoulder straps are very comfortable. Does not affect your shooting. You can see it's very flush and when you go to shoot, there's nothing that is binding you up or causing your gun to not mount properly because it's flush and you don't even notice that you don't need to unbuckle to be able to shoot. The clasps that they use to buckle are very clean and very small, minute. Whatever material that you need to make it as tight as you want, the rest of it goes straight down in the waiter and that also is not even noticeable. Another great feature and honestly a good little feature of not having zip waiters is this solid full pocket up in the front. So maybe you're a person that likes a bunch of your shells in there or you like a full pocket. That is the advantage of not having the zip where it's split in half. My other waiters that I had I'd put my shells in there in the side pockets and if you put too many in there, they're falling out, falling in the water. With this, I can unzip and I can fit nine shells in this pocket and it's got a shell holder. 12 gauge is pretty tight to get in there and you can and they stretch out a little bit after time so they fit in there better. 20 gauge is money, 28 gauge is even easier. But not only that, where you can put the shells in, you can put all the other stuff down inside this front pouch. I will tell you this, something I learned last season is this is not waterproof. This zipper, if you go this deep and I'm talking as you see, this is right by the top of the waiter anyways, but water will come in there so just pay attention to that is one thing I noticed. Another thing is it's really cool and I like this feature. If you want to keep your cell phone dry is the inside of the waiter's pouch for a cell phone or your keys, wallet, whatever you want to put in there. If you get like an iPhone Pro Max, it will fit in there but it's pretty tight and you can't take it in and out easy easy. You know what I mean? Like you can do it but if you want to slip it in and out quick, I just use the front pocket unless it's raining, then I'll put it in this back one. But any other phone fits in there really easy. And like I said, the iPhone Pro Max does, but it's just a little bit tighter to fit in there. Next thing on these waders is the side zips. It's got one on each side and behind the front pouch. And that's what I use to put my hands in. So like I zip it down, your hands get a little bit cold or whatever. You could slip them in there and you got a little bit of a fleece inside there. That's super nice, like on the back of your hands. Sometimes I zip up one side, leave the other side open and put my phone in there. Just your typical waiter belt around the waist. It's adjustable and in the back, Kuyu did two back loops. So basically if you wanna go higher or lower, kind of dep body dependent shape, you can. I use the higher one, that's the one I like to use and it seems like it fits the best and all the other guys that I've talked to seem like they like that the best too. Last but not least, I wanna talk about the boots. I am highly, highly, highly impressed by these boots. I honestly didn't think there was gonna be nothing more comfortable than the Sitka boots, but it's different. Let me explain myself and we've done some reviews on our podcast that you guys can listen to to go a little more in depth if you want to hear more because I can only say so much on a video I feel like but these boots are legit made for long walks and these California refuges or other places that you do a ton of hiking I'll take these all day long over this and I'll tell you why there here's a few things first off uh, there's a three-quarter shank in there and it just helps with stability and walking secondly is how it fits around your ankle it's a little bit more snug which obviously helps from heel slippage and things like that does that mean you need to size up one I don't really feel like that it just depends on what socks you wear so I've talked about these so many times in so many different videos these farm to fleet socks are I feel like the best sock on the market for waterfowlers I've been using these for so many years the first time I tried them I don't even know why I did or what made me buy these because they're not cheap I want to say this pair right here is like 28 bucks but it's the best socks I've ever worn I've worn them for years you can get different links obviously for waders I get them to where they basically go above the boot um, they're thicker right here like on the shin area you have to look them up I can't remember what model these are but because they have so many different socks they have thinner ones too but these are the thicker ones if you wear socks like this and this is why I brought these on here these being thicker socks and being wool I wear cotton ankle socks underneath and then I slip these on over top and I basically use these almost from the beginning of the season till the end because I like how it locks my foot in the waders and being wool it just is moisture wicking and I never have soggy wet feet just from sweating if you wear socks like this I would say you almost could go a size bigger in the boots it's just it depends on how you like your boots to fit if you kind of like them loose I like them kind of snug for hiking and for going on long walks um, if you're gonna stand a long time yeah maybe the Sitka's boots are a little bit more 
cushiony and mushy. But I'm gonna tell you something, if you do any bit of walking, that's the last thing you want. And you can talk to any guide or outfitter and they're gonna tell you, when you go on long hikes, you want more of a firm sole because really mushy causes basically a rubbing or a slipping in there and that's what can cause you blisters. The other thing about these boots that I'm insanely impressed about, and you guys are probably gonna think this is stupid, but is the tread on the bottom of the boot. It's supposed to be similar to a mountain bike tire tread. When we did a podcast with Sean and Kevin, I thought, is that really gonna make that much of a difference? Like, it sounds cool and everything, but like, is it really gonna make that much of a difference? I promise you guys, we have some of the nastiest, murkiest, stickiest mud in some of our ponds that we hunt in California. And what ends up happening is every time you take a step, a layer builds up. Then you take another step and another layer builds up. By the time I've gone out of the pond at times, I've had four to six inches of mud stacked because it's like super sticky. I have not had that with these. I thought I was like, I'm not gonna say nothing to nobody. Like they're gonna think I'm crazy. And I started talking to some of the other guys and they're like, yeah, dude, I've noticed that. Like when you're going through those really nasty, murky, mucky, sticky ponds, it does not build up, it sheds the mud. That design somehow works perfectly with super sticky mud. As far as sizing goes, for me, again, I'm 5'10", 215 pounds. They have a great sizing system. You can fit all body shapes and sizes. Surprisingly enough, I thought I would've wore a regular, and I can wear a regular as far as the inseam goes, but believe it or not, I wear the short. So, like I said, I'm 5'10". You would think I'm in the regular size, but I feel like there's more baggage in the crotch area with the regular for a guy that's 5'10". Um, I will tell you that Kuyu does a free exchange, so if you order them online, and you're like, man, this isn't this isn't right, you can send it right back in and get your replacement super easy, so don't even stress about that. It actually fits great, and fits as it should, and if I crouch down or squat down, it's not too tight in the crotch, right? There's, there's enough material there, but not too much. There is a lifetime warranty on these waders, guaranteed for life. I mean, how do you beat that, right? How do you beat a lifetime warranty? Hopefully, I didn't forget anything, but if you guys have any questions or sizing issues or you want to know more about it that I maybe didn't explain in this video, comment down below, and I'll do my best to answer every single question that you guys have. If this video helped you, help me out, give this video a thumbs up. Also, I have this in a playlist, just a reminder. So if you wanna look at more of Kuyu's waterfowl items, go to our channel, look up the playlist for Kuyu waterfowl gear, and you'll see all the other articles of clothing that Kuyu offers for the waterfowl system. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.